Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. Yara rules are rules that were designed to essentially build sort of antivirus engines, detect malware, and in general sort of detect various patterns in binaries. It can be quite useful to create your own Yara rules occasionally. If you wonder how that works, Didier has a nice little tutorial in yesterday's diary for you. NetLab 360 has an interesting blog post with details about a DNS changer campaign that they have been tracking recently. DNS changers typically use exploits or weak passwords to change the DNS settings in routers. In a couple of cases, also exploits like cross-site request forging. Now, in this case, it seems to be they use the former, so weak passwords and some exploits against vulnerable scripts that lead to authentication bypass in order to update the DNS settings on these routers. Now, many DNS changer campaigns really just change the DNS settings to direct victims to spam and ad campaigns or to redirect, for example, Google to their own search engine. In this case, it looks like the bad guys went a step further and launched full phishing attacks. What they did was if a user went to a bank's website, they would redirect them via the bad DNS server to a phishing site that would then steal the victim's credentials. NetLab360 is calling this particular group Ghost DNS, and they have been tracking them now for a while. At this point, they appear to be focusing on routers in Brazil. The 100 plus thousand routers that NetLab360 believes are infected by this particular attack use 70 plus different firmware and router combinations, and also more than 50 domain names were redirected by this attack. Again, focusing on banks, but also things like, for example, Netflix were redirected to steal credentials. Your number one defense against attacks like this should be TLS. If the bank's website has TLS correctly configured with strict transport, security and the like, then your browser should actually refuse to connect to the malicious website. In addition, of course, it's never a bad idea to use difficult to guess passwords on your router, not to expose the web-based admin interface and keep your router firmware up to date. Yesterday I mentioned a surprise release by Adobe of an updated version of its PDF Reader and Acrobat products uh, fixing 80 plus different vulnerabilities. Now many users point to alternative software that you could use instead of Adobe's readers, but well, one of these packages, Fox, its PDF Reader, which is somewhat popular, just released a pretty massive update itself fixing more than 100 different vulnerabilities. So if you're using Foxit, make sure that you're up to date. And researchers from Positive Technologies discovered an interesting issue that apparently affects a number of older MacBooks. The problem here is, uh, well, yet again, in some ways, uh, the Intel management engine. Now, in this case, it's really not so much an Intel issue as apparently more an Apple issue. Intel's ME does have a manufacturing mode. As the name implies, this mode is used by manufacturers to to configure the platform and also to run tests and the like. And this mode should be disabled before the laptop reaches the consumer. But apparently for some MacBooks, this wasn't done properly. So the manufacturing mode was left open, which would allow a user of the laptop to reconfigure it. And for example, load old vulnerable versions of the management engine. Apple has released an update for this issue back in June as security update 2018-3. So if you applied this update, then you should be all set. Positive Technologies also released a little Python script that you can use to check the manufacturing mode of your chipset. 
they did only test Lenovo and Apple computers, so there is a chance that it will affect other computers as well. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.